In the 1960s into the early 70s, when the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo missions were going on and spending a good, I think like 3% of the gross national product in the Apollo program, people saw the end result of flag and footsteps, as it was referred to on the moon. But the fact of the matter is that money fueled an incredible explosion in innovation. It built many of the large U.S. defense contractors good or bad results out of that, but it also drove the electronics industry to a great degree, creating much of the technology we take for granted right now in microelectronics, camera systems, comm systems, radar systems. And so whenever you force people to solve really hard problems and you limit them on budget, it means they have to innovate. One of the innovations that's fun that comes from a dear friend of mine, Craig Venter, is the idea of the transporter. And in the following way, imagine being able to send a device to the surface of Mars once life is formed. And instead of sending the life back, what the device does is it actually sequences the DNA mm -hmm. of the life form on Mars mm -hmm. and it transmits the sequence back. And then we recreate the sequence here on Earth and boot up a Martian life form because the instruction set tells you how to build the life form. Mm -hmm. So it's transporting life at the speed of light, mm -hmm. as uh, Craig speaks about it. So that kind of life teleporter is being demonstrated right now by his company, Synthetic Genomics, and the Defense Department and NASA. So a lot of interesting things. And you sent me an article link that NASA has just open sourced over a thousand of its patents because they want this tech to go into commercial mm -hmm. use. So you can actually get access to NASA's patents for like zero money down right now if you want to commercialize something.